Well, negotiations between the province and education unions are underway, and QP, or the Canadian Union of Public Employees, is asking for an 11.7% pay raise. That would mean $3.25 more per hour. Now, QP represents over 55,000 workers, not teachers, but office workers, bus drivers, custodians, and more. And many in the labor sector are paying keen attention to these negotiations in this age of high inflation. Now, Larry Savage is a professor in the Department of Labor Studies at Brock University and joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. So what do you make of this ask from QP of nearly 12 percent as far as a wage increase for its education workers? Well, I think people might hear that number and think, wow, that's a big number. But the context here is important. This particular group of workers, education workers, uh, have been really losing their real income over the course of the last decade in Ontario. And that's because of government imposed wage restraint, uh, first from Bill 115 under the previous Liberal government and then under Bill 124 with the Ford government. And so these workers, these education workers, saw a wage increase of just 8.8% over the last decade. So that's less than 1% annually, even though inflation has increased by 19.5% over that same period. So if you do the math, it's plain to see that these workers' wages have actually decreased and significantly so over the course of the last decade. And so they are now playing catch up. Okay, so they're playing catch up and have come back to the table with a a request of an almost 12 percent increase in pay. I'm guessing other unions would be watching this pretty closely. Well, certainly, I think in the broader public sector, uh, this is an important round of bargaining because QP is the largest public sector union in Ontario. I should say there are a number of private sector unions out there like the Teamsters and and a number of construction unions that have managed to negotiate uh, wage increases that have matched inflation. And so there's sort of a precedent for this. But what's interesting in this round of bargaining is that we're talking about the public sector. And Mm -hmm. so uh, government holds the purse strings. And uh, we know that the Ford government has an ability to pay given that last month. The province's financial accountability office released that report that Mm -hmm. revealed that the government had had spent billions less than planned last year. Uh, So I think the the union and those workers are keenly aware of that dynamic. Um, You say they spent billions less. It was somewhere around around seven billion under what plan spending was, correct? That's right. Um, What's your assessment of you know, the current state of negotiations, you talk about this round. Where, where are things right now between education unions in the province? Well, CUPE served its notice to bargain back in June. And ever since then, the Minister of Education has sort of been playing this PR game where he goes in front of the cameras and he insists that the, the province is doing everything to ensure an uninterrupted school year. But behind the scenes, government officials have only really met twice with the union. And uh, so I, I think it's a bit disingenuous for the minister to claim that he's doing everything to secure a deal when the government officials who are responsible for bargaining are clearly dragging out the process. And I, I think that's creating some anxiety for education workers and for parents, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so when you have one party that's ready to bargain, ready to make a deal, and the other one who is not really engaging with you, uh, that's not how the collective bargaining process is supposed to work. And so it'll be interesting to see if if these parties kick it into high gear in the weeks to come. Well, I I do wonder how this is going to to play out and what you expect to see, because we we spoke um, over a week ago with the Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce, on this this very program, after also uh, hearing from um, a representative from um, uh, unions on on the teachers' side. This wasn't with the uh, with education workers, but with teachers. But it just seemed that the there there was already this this great animosity um, uh, being being uh, put on display as as uh, one of the reactions to the announcement from uh, the minister of education was that he was saying things or, or taking shots at at teachers. Uh, some of the teachers felt that, that that were mean, and and it really sounds as though there is so much animosity already. How do you how do you see this playing out moving forward? 
Well, I think there is a lot of animosity between the minister and teachers. But remember, in this particular case, we're not talking about teachers. We're right. talking about all those other education workers that are the backbone of schools. And I think it's it's common for people to conflate teachers with these other education workers. But what's important in this case is that these workers, the one we're talking about, they make on average $39,000 a year. So when when they go to the bargaining table and they ask for a wage increase, it's based on what is a, uh, uh, an average uh, annual pay rate that is much lower than uh, than teachers. And they are experiencing, I, I think, a different level of economic insecurity. And I think that this group of workers will have a, a more of a claim at the bargaining table to make gains that other groups of workers in the public sector may not have that same claim. Okay. So I, I think that this round is different. It also involves a province-wide province, -wide province uh, table where they're bargaining. And so the potential for economic disruption in the case of a strike or lockout is uh, is significant. Mm -hmm. and, and and I get that we are talking about education workers here, and and we spoke with the Minister of Education about about teachers, but I don't think it's just uh, I don't think it's a very select few who are, who are con conflating the two areas of work. I think that they're actually spoken about so often uh, in tandem, in, in and and so we find ourselves even often having to point out that education workers uh, don't include the, the teachers, and teachers don't include education workers necessarily. I, I I do think though, or I guess I should ask you. Um, if education workers move forward with this and are successful, would that not uh, play out with with uh, teachers and 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 other uh, people in the sector as well? It, that's possible. It, it's interesting in Ontario's education sector. There's actually very little coordination between unions, between education workers and teachers, and even amongst teachers unions themselves. Uh, it's that's been the history. Uh, arguably, they would probably all do much better if there was a greater deal of coordination. And I think the government knows that there's a lack of coordination and uh, tries to take advantage of that as part of the bargaining process by maybe playing divider and conquer or, or, uh, or isolating individual unions uh, in order to ensure that um, that they're getting the best deal from their perspective. Uh, Larry, great to get your thoughts on this. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Larry Savage is a professor in the Department of Labor Studies at Brock University.